So today we're going to go over the EG4 indoor Power Pro battery and we're going to be installing it in my basement and we're going to have this all up and working. So this is a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It has 14.3 kilowatt hours worth of storage inside of here and it can output up to 200 amps max. So some of the things I like about this battery is that it does have its own circuit breaker here on the side. It has lifting handles on the side as well and it has these ropes when it comes out of the box to help you get it out of the box because this weighs I think like 280 pounds. This thing is a beast. It's definitely you're going to need some a piece of equipment to help you move it around or it's going to take at least two people. So on top you have the positive and negative battery connections. These are 250 amp like quick connectors and there's four of them on each side and these are attached to a 600 amp bus on the inside of this so you can take three of these 200 amp batteries and you can connect them all together onto this one bus and it would be able to handle the power from all three. And on the front of the unit there is a touchscreen interface. You can use that to monitor the battery and to be able to change all the settings. So one of the options you can purchase is a conduit box that is made to go directly on top. It makes wiring this a lot easier. So before we install this in the basement, let's go ahead, we'll open this up and we'll see how well it's built. So as you look in here, there is a total of eight batteries in each row, total of 16 batteries in series. And you can see that each battery connection has a wire that goes back to the battery management system. And that is so it can monitor the voltage level of each one of these cells in the battery pack. And you can see that in the monitoring software. You can see we got parallel battery cables coming off, going to the breaker on the side and then up to the 600 amp positive bus. And then you have parallel cables coming off the negative down through your battery management system and then up to the negative bus bar. So overall, the battery pack seems to be very well put together. And even though that it is um, lithium iron phosphate, which is actually the safest chemistry you can get in a lithium battery, it still actually has two fire arresters that are installed on the top here, right above each one of these rows. And that's just for added safety. And this has passed UL 9540A testing, which is like a thermal runaway and fire safety test. And, and this has passed that test. So I think that lets the customer know that the product is proven to be safe and that installing it in a building has very low risk factor. And to me, that is very important since I'm gonna be installing this in my basement. All right, let's put it back together. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get this installed in my basement. Now I do have a walkout basement, so I should be able to just take it straight in the basement door. I don't have to go down any stairs to get this where it needs to go. So that's gonna make this a lot easier. So I get this to my basement. I wish that all four tires were big. So these ropes are just kind of weaved around this bracket and they just come off pretty easy. So on the back of this battery, there is a bracket that is made for hanging it on the wall. But since we are just going to go ahead and sit it on the concrete floor, we're still going to use the bracket, but it'll just keep the battery from tipping over. That's all it's really going to be used for. So I'm going to go ahead, take this bracket off, get it mounted to the wall and then get the battery set on top of it. So now the trick is to get the PowerPro battery up on the bracket. You have to lift it like an inch and a half to get it over the top of the bracket and then it needs to fall down and 
it's a fairly tight fit if not perfectly aligned it gets caught a little bit and um, it may take some finagling for sure so included with this is a battery communication cable which is basically a cat 6 cable and then it comes with two negative battery cables and two positive battery cables and these do have the uh, special connector that is needed on the end to connect to the top of the battery now the other end of the cable is bare and you have to put the correct terminal or connector that you need on the other end so these are two watt cables and they're identified as AWM cable which is appliance wiring material and you will not find this listed in the national electric code because it is not an NEC spec it is actually a UL specification UL 3512 so these are very nice cables this has a silicone uh, rubber insulation on the outside it's rated at 200 degrees Celsius which is 392 degrees Fahrenheit a typical wire is only 90 degrees Fahrenheit so this is a high temperature cable and then it's very str fine stranded wire it uh, has um, I think it's 359 strands in this cable so uh, and it's nickel plated uh, copper conductor also so very nice cable the only problem is is without it being in the NEC code you don't know what the true ampacity of this cable is unless you can find it from the manufacturer which I could not so the best thing to do is just kinda use maybe a welding cable of the same size and go with that ampacity because this is obviously with the finer strands and the higher temp this is gonna have a higher ampacity so now go ahead and put on the conduit box so there are four screws two in the front two in the back um, they're raised up screws are they're, they're uh, pretty easy to recognize we're gonna go ahead and take those out go ahead and set our conduit box on here and the conduit box is already pre-drilled to match those holes so we just gotta put the screws back in tighten it down all right we got it bolted down now you can see the door actually has a ground wire on it that is something that a lot of people miss when they go buy these cheap enclosures the door has to be grounded you can't the hinge is not a good bond so you always have to have a ground on any of your enclosure doors and then there's a green screw here in the back and that's what we're going to attach that to but then yet we still have to ground the battery and it'll have to tie up of course to the ground on our inverter so it can get bonded back to the true earth ground so as I'm looking at this, I see that the door is grounded and I see the top of the battery is grounded, but I'm not seeing the case being grounded. The hinges aren't a good bond. And I don't think these screws are bonding it either. So just out of good measure, better safe than sorry, I'm gonna go ahead, I've got a ground bar right here, and I'm gonna mount that to the back left side of the cabinet so that the case is grounded and it gives me a good ground point inside of here. And I'm just gonna throw a paper towel in here to cover the, the connections up. I should have done this before I mounted the, uh, the enclosure. I've got the door, the battery, and the enclosure all bonded together. So the next thing to do is I'm gonna grab the inverter that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna get it mounted on top of this wiring enclosure. There's little protective covers over these battery connections and these things are on there pretty good. Oh, there we go, finally. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the positive and negative battery cables. There's only need to hook up one black and one red. No need to hook up both that came with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook up the inverter side first. And I'm going to leave the rest of the battery cable inside this box. I'm just going to kind of route it the best I can. And click. It's on there. Getting the battery communication hooked up. And since these are both EG4, they're CAN bus compatible, so I can just plug right in to the CAN bus port. So I've got an inverter all wired up on top of the battery now. So to power this up, 
we've got our communication cable, our battery cables. All we got to do is change the dip switch setting, right? So we're going to set that down on number one. It's going to give it an address. So when we go through this boot up sequence, it should communicate through CAN bus and the inverter should be able to see all the information it needs. So we're going to go ahead and turn our breaker on on the battery. We're going to go ahead and turn our breaker on on the inverter. And the last thing to do is to hit the power switch. The battery will boot up and then it'll power up the inverter. You can see the screen's coming on there. There, the inverter's already on. You probably can't see that screen. So right now our battery state of charge is 55%. And looking at our screen here on the inverter, it shows the state of charge is 55% as well, so we know that communication is working. So now all I want to do is I want to try to force charge the battery from the inverter and get it back up to 100%. Well, you can hear the fans kicking up. It's got 103 amps going in right now. So I've got the indoor PowerPro battery. It's all wired up now. I've got the 6000 XP running on top. It's been running for six days now. This is the sixth day. And every night we have drained the battery down to 20% and then charged it up on solar the next day. Everything has worked flawlessly. The communication is working perfectly to the inverter. And then you can actually see the battery cell voltages on the website through the Wi-Fi of the inverter. So it's passing all that information back and forth. No problem so far. So on the front of the battery, you've got these green LEDs. And this is a quick reference for the state of charge. So one LED is between zero and 25%. The second one is between 26 and 50% and so forth to 100%. And um, right now we're sitting at 26%. So we just turned on this second LED. So when you look at the front of the battery in the center, you see your state of charge, 27%. Just kind of gives you a status update. It's charging, it tells you the address you set on the dip switch, which we set it at one. It tells you your communication protocols your voltage, your amp hours, and then this is how much it's actually charging. It's charging at 24.89 volts or amps right now. And then on the settings menu, there's really not much to put in here. You can change your communication protocols, and that's really the only settings in your language. Other than that, you can see the voltages of all the cells. This is all the different cell voltages. And then you can also see the temperatures on the inside of the battery, the four temperature sensors. So really, as far as setting this up goes, the only thing you really can change in here is going to be the communication settings. So now that we're all wired up, I just want to show you the inside of this conduit box. It makes the whole installation easier, simpler, and everything just looks better. So as we look inside the wiring trough, you can see we've got two conduits. We've got one here. This is for our AC power uh, in from the grid and out from the inverter. We've got our two solar panel array wiring coming out of this conduit, plus we have our rapid shutdown coming up inside as well. You can see we've added, we added this, we added the ground bar here in the back just to give us an extra grounding point and to make sure that everything's, the case and everything's grounded. So I just looked at Signature Solar's website to see what the price of this conduit box was, and I found out that this exact one does not sell with the indoor battery anymore. They sell this one with the outdoor batteries and then they have a slightly different one that they sell with this battery. And the major difference is it doesn't have a hinged door anymore. This one's hinged and lockable and the one that will come with the indoor conduit box is going to be a removable cover. It has like four screws that hold it on. Other than that it has knockouts on the sides. It also has knockouts on top and you just knock out whatever one's appropriate for your inverter or you can modify it however you want to match up to a non EG4 inverter. So I definitely think if you're going to buy this battery that the conduit box is a must. This only costs like $98 and it just simplifies the installation so much. Um, $98 is a small, <laughs> small price in the grand scheme of everything. It's definitely worth it if you're buying this battery. So like I said earlier, this is an indoor battery. Um, it can't be mounted outside, but it does have built-in heaters in it. So if the battery cells get to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius, the heaters will kick on to warm the batteries. So that means it still needs to be inside, but it can be in an unheated space. So you could put it out in your garage, you could go put it in a shed out behind your house. Um, and it will keep the batteries warm during the, the cold temperatures. 
And that's a feature that I think should be included in most batteries now. My other system that I have, the EP Cube, it doesn't have heated batteries and I actually had that shut off on me in the winter time for getting too cold and it shut off charging. It wouldn't charge below 32 degrees. But if you end up having a battery with heaters in it and you have a cold spell like we did with negative six Fahrenheit, um, you wouldn't have to worry about it. And that's the great thing about the heaters is you may never use them, but if you need them, you got them. So this does have that built in. So I did end up buying this battery with my own money to install down here in my house. This is the one that I chose to buy because it has the features that I like. One is that it's it's a pretty good capacity and it fits against the wall. It, it fit my space well. It doesn't take up a lot of room down here. Um, I like the form factor with the conduit box. The inverter sits on top. It just looks nice, neat. It makes it very simple to wire up. I like that it has the display where I can see what's going on with it. I don't have to have a, a cell phone or internet or some type of Bluetooth you know, communication to talk to it. The information's there if I need it. And I also think I got enough space here that if I want to, I could fit another battery over here. I'd probably have to redo a little bit of the conduit and a few things, but I think I can fit another one down here later on if I, if I decide to. So looking right now at Signature Solar's website, this costs right around $3,300 for this battery. And if you wanted to buy this complete setup with the 6,000 XP conduit box, everything that we installed here, it's 4000 about $4,800 right now. So I'll go ahead, I'll put some links in the description down below for the batteries and the whole setup here. If they are affiliate links, so if you end up buying anything through them, it will be uh, a small sales commission that I'll get. It won't change the price any, it just helps out me and the channel if you end up buying them through my links. So I think that wraps up this video. We'll let this run for the next month or two and then we'll come back, we'll revisit this whole system and we'll see how it does. But uh, so far, been running for like six days now and it's worked great so hope you guys have a great day i'll see you in the next one